This climb really does have everything that you want in an alpine climb with the addition of a lot of fear that you don't want. I think we need to give ourselves the, like, the most amount of time as we possibly can. Yeah. We get up at 12.30, poke our heads out the tent, if we can't see stars, go back to bed. Mm, breakfast of champions. Mm. I somewhat disagree. Whatever. It's so good. This is what gives you power in the 20th hour. This is what gives you a tummy in the 20 minute hour. No, there's no tummy you could walk. Okay, it means it's go time. Seven. We started at 2.30. Now we're at the base of Mount Waddington after coming up quite a bit of crevassed, glaciated terrain. Now the question is how to get over the Berkshire. We're gonna move together. Nothing like a uh, technical approach to start the morning. We're not even on route yet. <laughs> We've been climbing for a while. This is probably the, one of the sketchiest zones for rock climb. That seems pretty solid, huh? Yeah. Good job. Yeah, I got my heart pumping. <laughs> Going through the shooting gallery. gallery. I think we might probably have more shooting gallery. No, I think less than 10 parties have summited via this way. When we pulled around the buttress of the traversing section of the route and we could see the triangular snow field for the first time, just looking at that, it looked so steep. The description said 50 degrees, it looked more like 80 degrees and tons of grooves from rock and ice fall along the way and it's just like what are we getting ourselves into here this is this is crazy all this loose stuff is like <laughs> pretty full on and the slope turned out to be you know actually quite easy given the rest of the climb the biggest component to it was stuff from above falling down because you can be the best climber in the world and still get hit by a rock and it knocks you off or kills you or whatever so that was constantly playing in the back of, or in the front of our minds. We were just trying to move quickly, move quickly, move quickly, to get good gear in. About one o'clock, we're about 1,100 feet from the summit. Mark's taking over a rock pitch.
line up. When we got to the base of the head wall and we were looking up, none of the options looked very good considering how many huge chunks of loose rock there was. I remember looking down because all this rock and snow was coming down on us. And I tried to put my backpack up over my neck just a little bit thinking like, I wonder if this is the climb I'm gonna die on. <laughs> I laugh because that's my way of coping. The component of having to second guess and every placement for your foot and your hand and your gear was for sure the hardest part of the climb. I mean, there was no move that was harder than maybe 5'8", but then you throw in the loose stuff, you throw in the stuff falling on you, having a backpack at high altitude. And I could only imagine, like, if I had to do all that in, like, a cloud with some precip or something, there's no way. But we had the weather on our side, so we kept going. Just put it on the other gravel. And then you're gonna gas stone off of that loose flake. That's Careful of that big one. This one. Yeah, there you go. Nah, yeah, don't grab that. I got you tight. Can I grab? Hi, yeah, yeah. Do you feel the same way I do? You just didn't verbalize it. <laughs> oh, we all feel that way, sweetheart. That was this, probably the scariest lead I've done. In your whole life? Uh, I'd have to <laughs> think about it, but close to it. Yeah, we were in the firing zone down there. Yeah, I know about three pitches from the summit, and it's been a constant stream of rocks and ice coming down on us. I don't like it so much. Mark's still going up. He's gonna take us to the top. His determination is pretty impressive. Oh look, there's more stuff. We are near the top, and the sun is near the horizon. Oh no. It's like extreme 5-7 climbing. And you can't trust any blocks. And if you pull one off, you fall. And you kill your Belair. So I'm gonna sleep pretty good once we get down from here. Here comes Chris to the summit. Nothing else around us is higher. Started repelling into the dark, headlamps on from, from the get-go. We had roughly 4,000 feet to descend of technical terrain. We made the decision to repel a different way as opposed to the way that we came up just because we were scared of the rockfall. The downside to it is that we had to go into this slot that releases a lot of rock and ice and it all funnels exactly where you're gonna go. This is the part of the climb that you don't wanna tell your parents about. It was dark, it was so windy that we couldn't hear each other speak and we had to yell over the wind. It was blowing everything we had. If you held up any sort of rope or anything, it would just go Whoosh! And our ropes got snagged after four repels. We, we built an anchor to try to five to one pulley system, didn't work. And that's when we realized that somebody had to press it up the rope to see where it was snagged. But I was frightened that as I was going up that the rope might be snagged on something sharp. And as I took the rope, the rope would go up and down and cut on something, but we really didn't have any other option. Cold, sunburnt, feet hurt, hips hurt, shoulders hurt. It was an awesome climb though. Now we're halfway down, maybe half, I don't know, you know where we are. Wind's ripping it. I think we've been moving for 27, 28 hours. What? The rope got caught a few more times and Chris went up one time to unsnag it and came back down. 
I went back up another time to snag it and down. And I think after 20 plus repels of mostly V threads and a couple rock anchors, we got back down to the glacier. We spent 14 and a half hours. We survived. 35 hours of move time. Who's starving? Yay! I feel like as far as calories go, anything goes on the glacier. Donuts, chips, cookies. Actually, speaking of donuts, where are they? Are they gone? You killed the donuts! If we hit him, you wouldn't notice. That is a capital offense, in my opinion. It doubles as an emergency blanket. Pretty good treat. Woke up quite an appetite sitting around. Just called Mike King, and he said he could be here in 20 minutes. 15 minutes later, we broke down all the tents, and we're ready. Ow! Now we hope that the clouds don't come back in, because we have to set up everything. Sometimes to reach the summit you have to make sacrifices, and you don't really know if it's worth it or not until you get back down. I guess in this case it was worth it, because we all made it down unharmed. Future.